Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. Um, what we are going to do is to sort of touch upon what we did in class, which is um, covered a lot actually uh, yesterday. Just to give you an idea of what it is, um, if we play the game and if I right click, you can see the score goes up and then it calls our high score. So, for example, 19. There you go, let's see that one more time. If I less than 19, it doesn't go up. If I do, let's say, 20 or 22, again, it records that for us as well. It seems, yeah, just want to make sure that the time is also in sync with resetting the value, which is something seems to be. Um, so, what I'm going to do is delete done previously and uh, we're going to go ahead and assume that none of these are here because we are going to go ahead and recreate all of this again from scratch so let's go ahead and delete that and delete this um, I'm just undoing everything that I have done previously another thing that we did actually uh, work on was the um, the fact that we created this lift that we could go on we would press F the lift goes up we press F the lift comes back down we press F the lift goes up and if we come back if we jump off the lift will also come down as well now this one I'll probably introduce in another video tutorial but for now let's concentrate on our clicking it so what we're going to do is open up third person characters blueprints so inside the third person blueprint in case if you don't see this menu you need to click on uh, uh, this button which says show or hide the source panels third person blueprints blueprints and open the third person characters blueprints and we are inside this um, characters blueprint on the event graph let me see what I have let's see event take for something else and that's the left mouse button okay. so what we're going to do is find the empty space and we're going to say on right mouse click, right, right mouse button. The reason we're not doing left mouse button is because our character is set to um, shoot lasers on left mouse button, so that's why we're using right mouse button. I want to say right mouse button. Well, first we need to create a um, a, ver a variable that's going to store our information in. So let's create a new variable and click um, name this uh, clicks. Now we don't want it to be a boolean, we want to make sure that's a float value or an integer, either case it doesn't matter. And I'm going to say set the clicks to whatever click is, so get clicks plus float plus float 1. If you're doing integers, you'll need to say integer, so put 1 there, plus 1. So what that will do is it will always add clicks to it. And if I compile and click on clicks, you can see the default value of clicks is zero, meaning that um, it starts with zero. The first time we click, it adds one to zero, makes that the new clicks, then now the value of this is one. The second time we click on it, it'll make it two, and so on and so forth. Um, but what we also want to do is to, just for testing purposes, we're gonna print this just to see that it's working. So if I play the game, and if I write, oops, that prints hello. Um, it shouldn't print hello, it should print this. So let's compile that. And so now every time that I click, you can see the numbers are going up, but there's nothing that ever resets this. So what we can do is to go ahead and create a system that's going to reset this every time we, um, every five seconds, for example. So what we're gonna do is on event begin play, can't type today, even begin play, we're going to set the timer by function name. And this function name is going to uh, require a custom event. So I'm going to right click and say custom event. And I'm going to name this reset clicks. And what it's going to do is that it's going to set the value of clicks to zero just like that and the function name has to be this the best case is to just select this 
highlight the name, copy it, and just paste it there, Control C, Control V, time every five seconds, and make sure you click on loop. And if I compile and play, so the values are going up as I click, and after five seconds, then it jumps back down to one. So that's working fine. The other section is to have a um, a system that will record the highest score. Now we know this is working, so we're going to take this out. So I'm going to say max clicks. And what we're going to do is before we reset this to zero, we're going to go ahead and get a branch, an if statement. We're going to say we're going to get clicks. I want to get max clicks. I'm going to say is clicks the number of clicks value is it equal or more than max clicks if we have made more clicks than our value of max clicks then print new high score and then reset um, clicks if the number of clicks is not equal or greater than max clicks, then uh, reset clicks anyway. So let's play that. I'm going to play and I'm going to make five clicks. And it would make sense if we did continue printing this so you could actually see this. Um, so print string my clicks, compile, play. Um, so let's make five clicks and after five seconds it should say new high score now if I click two times or three times after five seconds I still get new high score being printed um, that is a little bit just a little tiny bit strange let's have a look so we're resetting that to zero so let's make five clicks or four clicks. This is new high score. Very good. If I click once, it still says um, <coughs> let me pause the video and see what the problem is. Right, sorry, there was a uh, mistake which was um, before we print the string, we have to set what max work speed is. We're checking whether this is greater or not. Um, so, what we have to do is drag from true, or in fact, we could just get, get max clicks, bring it here and set max clicks. Make sure you continue the execution line, set the max clicks to whatever clicks is. We could either get clicks. And put that there, or we could just we already have clicks here, just click and drag that into that. Same thing, doesn't make a difference. Now, if I was to compile and play, I make six clicks, it says new high score. I make three clicks, it says nothing. I make seven clicks or eight clicks, and it will say new high score. Excellent, so that's working fine as well. Um, now what we want to do, we know this is working, but we don't want to see this just saying new high score, new high score. What we do want is to have a HUD system which will display that for us. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and inside the folder that I'm going to be able to have access to, right click, user interface, HUD, uh, sorry, <laughs> not HUD, um, widget, a uh, blueprint. So just to show you that again, <coughs> user interface widget blueprint, and I'm gonna call this uh, hot score. It's very important that you know what you name this hot score. I'm gonna open it. Put that next to that. I'm gonna search for a text and click and drag a text into there. I'm gonna call this, let's say, all in capital high score. Without the exit. There we go. I'm gonna make that bigger. 
and I can change the size of that text if I wanted to. I could change the color to uh, let's go green this time or greenish, roughly. Let's have a look. So I think that. That's good. And then I want another text that this one's gonna say score. Oops. Make sure you click on on the content says text. Remove that and say score. Oops. Okay. We'll leave this as a white little thing. Um. Then what we are going to do is go ahead and get another text. Put that in front. Give this a uh, size. There you go. We don't care. We don't, we don't need to change it. Under contact text, there's a bind button. We want to create a new bind for that. And we want to cast a third person oops, character. And from here, we're going to uh, get player pawn. Now, through here we have access to whatever the third per person character has and what the third person character has is the max clicks so from here I'm going to search for oops, get max clicks and we're going to be finding that so if I compile and play actually I won't see anything right now if I play because I've created the widgets but I'm not using it so what I want to do is I need to begin play after we set this um, timer we want to go ahead and say um, uh, create widgets and from the class we want to get the one that we named I named my, my uh, hot score if you remember and then we want to drag from the blue pin and say add to viewport now if I was to compile and play this so we have the high score and the score when I click my high score will now uh, be added to whatever my high score is every five seconds Next. Now we want to do a very similar thing. Going back to the HUD, going back to this designer tab, I'm going to get another text. That there. I'm going to bind the text of this to, again, as to third person character. Get player pawn. This time, we name the, uh, the normal uh, count clicks. So let's say get clicks and print that. Very good. So now when I click, the numbers go up. And after five seconds, let's say that that's my high score. Let's go with 20, 21. There we go. Excellent. So that's working. So the HUD's been created and working as well. If you want, you can always go back to designer, uh, change their colors to something different. And again, this one I could color it something else. It's probably not a very good color combination with making the rainbow here now. If I play it, those changes have been made. Hopefully, you can go with a better choice of colors. Now, what we want to do is see if we can create that um, counting system. In fact, what I want is another text box. That is going to be my um, time counter, and I'll probably just do that and make it a little bit bigger. And let's have it yellow. Okay. Over here, what I'm going to can close that. Over here, what I'm going to do is to go ahead and create a um, new uh, custom event. I'm going to call this time, and this custom event kind of time will need a new variable, and that variable is going to be seconds. And I'm going to set seconds to whatever second is minus one. Oops, just just minus for now, and then minus one. And the default value of seconds, if I compile, I'll be able to select seconds and here I can see the value. If you don't compile, you won't be able to see this. So I'm gonna click seconds, and I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna say the default value is five. Now we have this, but this needs to run every, uh, 
fractions of seconds with a delay this has to happen so what I'm going to do is before we set the second we are going to go ahead and have a delay of one second so the default value is five wait, wait one second minus one make it four wait one second minus one make it three and that continues that way so what we need to do is to make sure that our time runs as soon as we create our uh, the game begins as well this this function the function <coughs> time runs so what we want to do is right after we create the timer we want to search for whatever the name of this uh, function is which is time so we want to say time and it says call function time so that will run and the other thing is what we want to do is every time this code runs we want to set this back to five seconds so after we set the clicks back to zero another thing we want to do is set the seconds back to five seconds if I compile and play this now uh, oh, we haven't done the binding for this so now we can come here and remember we named the seconds and come back to a high score uh, create a binding for the text again cast to third person character get player pawn and from here get seconds very good and print that compile and play Oh, uh, that's the seconds not working too well. Let's have a look what's causing the problem. So wait a second, get seconds minus five, and and even we can play run time. Oh, I see what's going on. Um, we are not actually um calling this as soon as the game. Um, every time we set it time runs only once and however it needs to run uh, every every second uh, I'm just thinking if we're gonna need a new timer for this as well we'll probably do a timer that will run this every second look um, I think we might not we might need that actually yeah, I think we could delete the time here and we could probably create another set timer by function name. And this one will have the name of time and it will run it. So if I was to play that now. Three, five, four, three, two, one sort of work and I mean there's a different way of doing this this is so sort of the really um, cheap and easy way of doing this there is a slightly um, better way of doing that that we'll touch upon that hopefully in class later on as well so there we go we have a clicking game where we can create uh, click and it will count our scores it will store our highest score and we have a timer that roughly works Thank you for watching. I will go ahead and create another video tutorial, hopefully, for um, to function. So, press F. I'll press F again. I'll jump off. Looks fine.